Yanis Lenacic is Europe's chief crisis manager, often at the forefront in response to natural disasters or humanitarian crises. He works with NGOs, coordinates with UN agencies and can mobilize millions of euros. We need to step up our humanitarian aid. We are doing so. The European Union is a key player when it comes to humanitarian aid. The bloc says it's committed to upholding fundamental human rights and to protecting those let down by their own governments. Years go by and everything stays the same. They don't deliver what they have promised. But what is the impact of EU action on the ground? And can it really bring about change? Early morning in Bogota, Colombia. Yanis Lenacic and his team are on their way to the northwest of the country, the department of Chaco. This is where the Spanish conquistadors founded one of their first cities in the Americas. Today the province is the poorest in Colombia. Lenacic visits the indigenous community of Villanueva. More than 40 families live here. They have been forcibly displaced twice as a result of threats and violence by criminal gangs. They lost their home, their livestock, and they still live in fear of armed groups which are recruiting their children and threatening their leaders. Berlin Chamampuro Caiza is the heart of Villanueva. Just like his grandfather, he has been fighting for the rights of his people since he was young. We would like to ask you, Mr. the European Union, because of our suffering, our history, because of what we've been enduring, we ask you to assist us when it comes to our problems. Territory, food, housing, we don't want any young life to die any longer in this area. Lenacic listens, asks questions. The security situation in Colombia has been deteriorating. The new leftist government, however, has promised to restart talks with guerrilla groups. Until that happens, until peace comes in this region and across, across Colombia. Y mientras no suceda esto, y mientras no llegue la paz en este territorio y en toda Colombia, I want to assure you that the European Union will continue to stand by you. We'll continue to provide our humanitarian funding so that we work with our partners in order to ensure your protection, to provide basic health services, to allow children to go to school. Kids in the community do receive some education in the village, but the school lacks equipment and learning materials. As Lenacic continues to stroll around the village, some of its residents show us their houses, built of palm wood. Dienewa Valencia is 34 years old. She tells us she is happy about the visit. Anything to improve their situation is welcome, she says. Anything to help with the lack of food. When we have food, then we eat. But there are days when we don't have anything at all, and then we don't eat. Sometimes selling handmade jewelry helps us. Berlin Chamampuro Kaiza also invites us into his house. This is where we sleep. This is our shelter. Here four people sleep. And over there two more people. The small ones here and the adults there. This is our kitchen. The water filter here was a gift from the UNHCR. Here you can see their logo. Thanks to our cooperation, we managed to get their support. Support from the UN and the EU is welcome, says the father of four. But he is still waiting for real change. We are sick and tired. Sometimes we are also denied our history. Many institutions came here, they asked, why are you displaced? 
Why are you here? They showed us they cared. They told us they would help us to be safe, to have housing, food, land. But years go by and everything stays the same. They don't deliver what they have promised. At least this time he doesn't need to worry about food. After the meeting with the EU commissioner, everyone in the community is invited for lunch. We do help a lot precisely because the government is largely absent from this particular department as well as from some other peripheral uh, departments of the country due to the violence perpetrated by the armed groups. That's why I think it's extremely important that we support the efforts by the new president of Colombia, Mr. Petro, who tries to, 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 to reach what he calls a total peace. Helping Colombia find peace and stability is also in Europe's own interest. The bloc wants to intensify its trade relations with Latin America, a region where the EU is struggling to gain influence against other players like China and Russia. We leave Colombia and head to neighboring Panama. Our destination is a refugee camp at the Darien Gap, a 100-kilometer-long swath of dense rainforest on the border between Colombia and Panama, one of the world's most dangerous migration routes. Lenacic's team has been pushing to get access to the area where the number of refugees and migrants has been growing. The EU has just quadrupled its aid to support those people to 2.7 million euros. I see that a lot of boats are coming. Yeah. How many have come so far today? Today we have 2,600. 2,000. Seven canoes in only 10 minutes. That's what we see. After a perilous journey from Colombia to Panama, those who manage to survive the forest are brought in by boats to Lajas Blancas, a reception center here. Along the route, robbery and rape are as present a danger as the insects and the lack of drinking water. It's horrible. Steep valleys, flooded rivers, you need to cross by ropes. You have to put the life of your kids in danger. There are no words. I thank God for allowing us to make it here and end this nightmare. It's very hard. They are exhausted. Some are in need of immediate help. But most are just relieved. They have survived. It's very complicated, with children even worse. Just the way up. It is not what people tell you. They tell you it is just three days, but in the end, it takes longer. It's hard. After being registered by the authorities, most are free to continue with their journey. Their dream is a life in the United States. Lenacic meets with families in private during his visit. He says he's moved by their stories. Especially when I see family with small children or uh, people who, are, who, are, uh, who have disabilities and so on. And of course you can see that uh, they are not, certainly not equipped for any serious tracking. So there is, there is, a, there is a big tragedy unfolding here. Uh, we know that these people have been lured with fal false promises into undertaking such a journey. Uh, so we will have to tackle that. However, some who have been stranded here for many days tell us the center was cleaned up by the authorities before the commissioner's visit. Don't believe this is usually as clean as you can see it now. The conditions for migrants are terrible here. The toilets are dirty. They don't respect hygiene standards. Critics say the government of Panama, which is not a poor country by international standards, is not doing enough to tackle the problem. Criticism the government rejects. 
We have been trying for more than two years to voice our concerns, both on regional and multinational level, so that people know about this human tragedy. We cannot do it alone. We need information, we need cooperation from other countries who are part of this migration flow. In other words, stopping human trafficking and tackling the root causes of migration is also in the interest of those countries the migrants are headed for, including the European Union. And apart from humanitarian concerns, that is certainly one of the reasons why the EU is stepping up its game. In Panama, the EU is now opening its first overseas aid stockpile, with pre-positioned goods and equipment in case of an emergency. For Lenacic, the intention is to show the support remains, despite the current crisis Europe itself is facing. We have now a terrible war on our own continent, and this terrible war, Russia's aggression against Ukraine, has resulted in uh, the worst humanitarian crisis in Europe since the Second World War. And that uh, has created some fears in other parts of the world that Europe would now uh, neglect other humanitarian crises. With my presence here, I wanted to make it clear that not only we neglect, we don't neglect, but we also step up our assistance whenever necessary. Panama City in the evening hours. More evidence of Europe's commitment to the region is the opening of a new headquarters of the EU civil protection and humanitarian aid operations. To reassure local partners, the EU is here to stay. The EU needs to be here. We need, especially on the, on the humanitarian side, we need this funding. I think that the kind of response that the EU, EU um, has been providing to Ukraine is precisely the kind of solidarity and visibility that we would like to have for, across the board. Despite the war in Ukraine, despite Europe's own problems, the people here tell Lenacic not to forget them in Latin America when he heads back to Brussels.